Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is a picture where I come from. It's a region in the northwest, northeast of Belgium, in the province of Limburg, a region with what was dominated by coal mining in the 20th century. But then in the early 1990s, all the coal mines closed down and people became unemployed. Lots of people. 40,000 people became unemployed. It was harsh. And what to do to show your resilience? How to solve the problem? The story is also a story of my, my life. My life, my childhood, how I became fond, passionate about biodiversity, about the environment, and how I tried to change that into action, into energy, to have change, to have sustainable change. And I remembered Martin Luther King, very young. He never started with, I have a nightmare. He always started with, I have a dream. So we have to live our dream and be the change we want to see. So the first thing I remember in my childhood was me playing in the meadows in the back of my house. And at once I was fascinated by a little insect, a ladybird with the black dots on it. And the only thing I could think at the time was, that must be mine. So I ran inside the house. My father, who was a miner, I stole his box of matches, put out the matches, ran back in the meadow, tried to find my ladybird. And once I found it, I put it in a box of matches, put some leaves of grass with it because I thought it needed to eat, but it was mine. And I opened the box even 60 times a day. So beautiful, it was mine. But you know what happened after three days? The ladybird died. Later I realized very well, very well, that the ladybird and the box with matches told me an important story. If you give no space to nature, if you give no light, no food, no drinks, if you pollute nature, it stops living. It was important. Later on, I became very, very fond of herpetology. You know, those crazy creatures like toads and lizards and snakes. And I did a lot of research on that. Every evening I was out digging in ponds trying to find amphibians. And at a certain point, at the age of 18, 19 years old, I found that one, the midwife toad. It's a very endangered species in Belgium, and it's a toad where the male carries the eggs just before hatching in the pond. I was so energized by that that I thought I need to find out how they live. So I, I went to Spain, where the species is still abundant, to do research. And when I came home, I tried to be smart because my father was a miner, was reading the newspaper, and I said, well, how do scientists talk to people? Well. You know, in Latin, of course. So I came home and I said, Daddy, Daddy, you never know what I have seen in Spain. And he said, hmm? I say, I have seen Alites obstetricans. And do you know what he says? And who won the match? So he was thinking that I went to a football match in Spain. But again, he learned me an important lesson that you have to translate the things that people can understand. Try to translate biodiversity, the environment, in a language that people can understand. Because that's important. It's very important. Because if we see what is happening in the world nowadays, is that the world population is exploding. We are up to, from 7 billion, going up to, 20, to 9 and a half in 2050. How to deal with that? People seem not to care about that. And you know, we often buy things we don't need with money we don't have and environment, an, an environmental impact we don't want. So if you see this picture and you think, well, this is the economic system where the only worth is growth, what will happen, you think? What will happen? Well, I think this gives a nice impression what is going to happen, happen with our economic system. If we keep on piling up these containers, 
we have a feeling there's something wrong. Well, I tell you, economy will stop. And the only thing we can do is invest in the basics of economy, invest in ecosystems and in wildlife. Because what we see in wildlife, another trend, is that creatures are extincting, are extincting at a fast rate of thousand times faster than ever reported before. And the only thing we seem to care about is our puppy. How come? What is wrong? Look into climate change. We have floods and droughts and hurricanes. We know that the Arctic and the Antarctic is melting, and the only thing we seem to care about is the melting of our ice cream. How to deal with that? But that learned me that we have to translate. Is it possible to tackle these problems and at the same time use it as a tool, as an asset for development? Is that possible? I want to raise a question to you. Do you think a polar bear is valuable, that he knows how valuable he is? Do you think a polar bear knows it, that he is endangered? No? A polar bear doesn't know how valuable he is. But if we start to think that a polar bear is valuable, we start to do things for them. So value is in the eye of the beholder. We, as people, will save the world if we are up to find a way, a reason to love it. And that's the thing we start up. I must say, after drinking a lot of good Belgian beers, we made a plan. We made a plan and say, let's protect biodiversity. Let's make nature sexy. And we do it latte proof. Local, authentic, traceable, trustworthy, and ethical. Let's think hybrid. We organized an NGO, the Regional Landscape Camp in Maasland, and we start up with an idea and a plan to establish the first national park bottom-up. Not top-down by a government, but bottom-up. Not talking in riddles, making a plan, designing a plan together with local people, with entrepreneurs, with universities, making a plan and go for a lobby for that and say, give us a benefit of the doubt. Let's do it. This is one of the precious places after closing down the coal mines that can be used as a tool for economic development too. That's what we did. 6,000 hectares, more than 6,000 species were still there. Use it as a tool. Let people feel, see how important they are and they will love it. So we created a project but I can now say, from NIMBY to PIMBY, from not in my backyard to please in my backyard, because this is what this is what's happening. We created a reconnection model, try to reconnect the society with the natural heritage by reconnecting bits and parts of nature together, by reconnecting people with nature. Let them feel, let them see, let them show, let them be in, not a fenced area. No, not talking in Latin anymore, talking in real streetwise. Let's reconnect business with nature. Of course, entrepreneurial world, the CEOs need to be there. They have a responsibility too, because they love nature too, to protect and to safeguard biodiversity and reconnect policy with practice. Let's convince them and do it. And what we saw that using that model, a very interesting correlation took place. Because investing, labeling in biodiversity for us, a national bar, but could be also a biosphere reserve or something else. You see a correlation where there is a social cohesion is going up, community awareness is going up, sustainable tourism is a very, very important thing. And you see, you can talk about biodiversity in economy and jobs. We found local solutions for global problems. That was the first step. And if we see, we try to measure things because we thought, well, it's good in our region, and that's the first thing I keep on want to do so. But we have to scale up, because if it is possible in Belgium, one of the densely populated areas in the world, it must be possible in other parts of the world too. What we saw that the national park that was established in 2006, 
has now 750,000 visitors a year. The nature is better protected. We have more butterflies, more birds, more amphibians. And if we looked into the ecosystem services of the national park, let's say, what is the value of the national park for clean water, clean air? How is the housing market, re market reacting? What is tourism doing in a region that is labeled as a quality space? Well, you see, there is an annual turnover now. It's calculated by an international methodology. It's 191 million euros a year and 5,000 jobs. Even more than that, 5,100 jobs are related to a pr project of biodiversity. So yes, we can protect, we can safeguard biodiversity, we can protect our Earth using this tool, this reconnection model. And of course, then it happens, due to Ashoka. Very much, thank you again, Ashoka, for doing this, because you can help us with scaling up, just talking with other people. Come on, people, let's do it. What I can do, you can do it also. Together with my team, I really do fantastic work, and you see now in several parts of the world, they are doing it as well. South Korea, an entire island, Jeju Island, is trying to set up the reconnection model. Latvia, uh, France, also in the UK, parts are now trying to believe that you don't close up nature in a box. You open it up for the community, for society, and then the things start to work. So if the things are that matter are you and me, and if the things that we all care about are the future generations, I think we need to protect, to safeguard the Earth, the planet, the million stars hotel we live in together. Because if we don't do it, who will do it? And if we don't do it now, when will it happen? And if we don't do it together, how will we do it? So let's protect the planet we live on. Think globally, act locally, and change personally. Thank you.